This short video will show you how to get started with the new Informatica Cloud Mapping Designer. The Mapping Designer gives you the ability to create flexible, reusable mappings. You can use the Mapping Designer when you need to create a task that is not supported in the Data Synchronization app, such as a task with multiple disparate sources or targets. The Mapping Designer can also be used by a developer to build reusable mappings that include parameterized values, allowing business users to quickly create tasks for repeatable processes. Before you begin using the Mapping Designer, you must have a secure agent installed and at least two connections created, one source and one target. First, let's review the business scenario for the mapping. On a nightly basis, you must create a flat file containing order data. These data must come from two separate sources, the account record in Salesforce, which contains all of the shipping data for each customer, and an orders table in a MySQL database, which contains order detail information, including product IDs and quantities. You must also calculate an order total based on product quantity and price, and filter the results based on product. As the Data Synchronization app does not support multiple connection sources, you can use the Mapping Designer to create a mapping. Using that mapping, you can then create a mapping configuration task to run the job on a regular schedule. Let's begin by creating a mapping. To create a new mapping, click the New Mapping button. Enter a name and optional description for the mapping. The Mapping Designer is displayed. The Mapping Designer has two main areas, the Canvas, where you drag and drop shapes, and the Properties pane, where you set properties for the mapping or a selected shape. Use these buttons to minimize or maximize the Properties pane as needed. You can also click and drag the Separator line to resize the pane. To create the mapping, drag and drop shapes from the Shapes palette onto the Canvas. The shapes represent sources and targets and transformations including Joiner, Filter, Expression, and Lookup. Let's begin by adding a source to the mapping. When you add a shape, the properties for that shape are displayed in the Properties pane. Enter a name for the source. Click on the Source tab to specify the connection and one or more objects for the source. In this case, I'll select a Salesforce Sandbox connection in the Account object. You can click the Preview Data button to preview the source data. The Fields tab shows you a list of fields for the selected object. By default, all fields are included and move forward in the mapping. You can optionally delete fields to exclude them from the mapping. Now let's add a second source to the mapping. The connection for this source will be the MySQL Orders database. The object will be the Orders table. As you can see, this table contains order details including the product SKU, quantity, and product description. Next, I'll add a joiner transformation to the mapping. To join the shapes, click on the triangle and drag the line to the next shape in the mapping. You must also specify which source will be the master and which source will be the detail. In this case, the Salesforce account object is the master, as there is one record per account. The MySQL orders table is a detail object, as it may contain multiple rows for each account. At any time, you can click on a shape to access the properties for that shape. The Incoming Fields tab lets you logically specify which fields you want to bring in from the previous shape. Notice that, by default, all fields are included. You can include or exclude fields by configuring rules. Rules allow you to include or exclude fields by name, or based on data type, or by text or pattern. 
Rules are applied at runtime, meaning that any fields added to a source after the mapping was created are automatically evaluated. Note that excluded fields will no longer be available from that point in the mapping. Click the Join Condition tab to specify the join condition to be used. Click the Add icon to add a condition. Select the Master and Detail fields for the join. In this case, records will be joined using the ID field on the Salesforce account record and the customer ID in the orders table. To calculate the order total, add an expression to the mapping. Connect the joiner to the expression so there are fields coming into the transformation. Click on the Expression tab to define one or more expressions. Add an expression by clicking the Add icon. Click on the new field to configure its properties. Then click on the Configure link to configure the expression. Enter or build an expression using the available fields, functions, and operators. Validate the expression. At any time, you can save the mapping by selecting Save and Continue from the Save menu. When you save a mapping, it is automatically validated. Because this mapping is incomplete, the mapping status is currently invalid. In order to finish the mapping, I need to add a filter and a target. First, I'll add the filter to the mapping. Define the filter condition by clicking on the Filter tab. Click the Add icon to create a new filter. Select the field. In this case, I want to filter on the Product Description field. Then select an operator and a filter value. To complete the mapping, add the target. Specify the connection and object for the target. The results will be written to the selected flat file. The last step is to map the fields to the target object. To do this, click on the Field Mapping tab. Drag and drop the incoming fields to map them to the target. If your field names are similar, you can also use the Auto Match button to map fields. To unmap a field, select the target field and select Unmap Selected. Now that the mapping is complete, you can save and validate it. Validate the mapping by clicking Save, then clicking Save and Continue. The mapping status is now valid. To view additional details about the validation, click the Validation button. If the mapping has errors, you can view them here by clicking the Show All Errors checkbox. Run the mapping by selecting Save and Run from the Save menu. Note that this will actually run the mapping and the data will be affected. To schedule a mapping, configure email notifications, or specify pre- or post-processing commands, you must create a mapping configuration task. While running, the mapping job is displayed in the Activity Monitor. 
When the mapping job completes, the results are displayed in the activity log. You can view more details about the job by clicking the mapping name. Once you have verified that the mapping works as expected, you can create a mapping configuration task that uses the mapping. This allows you to provide values for any parameters in the mapping, as well as define email notifications, pre- and post-processing commands, and run the task on a schedule. Note also that you can create multiple mapping configuration tasks for a single mapping. Before I do this, though, I want to go back into the mapping and actually parameterize the value used for product description in the filter. This will allow me to build multiple mapping configuration tasks using this mapping, one for each product. To edit the mapping, click the Edit button. First, I'll parameterize the filter condition. To do this, click on the Filter and then click on the Filter tab in the Properties pane. Click on the Value field. Select New Parameter. Enter a name for the parameter. You may wish to use a naming convention for parameters, such as P underscore. Assign meaningful labels and descriptions to your parameters, especially if other users will be using the mapping to build mapping configuration tasks. You can optionally specify a default value for the parameter. The filter is now set to a parameter called P underscore product description. You can review a list of parameters for a mapping by clicking the Parameters button. Click the arrow to view the parameter details. Click Save and Close to save changes and close the mapping. To create a new mapping configuration task, select Mapping Configuration from the Apps menu. Click the New button. Enter a name for the task and select an agent. Select the mapping to use for the task. An image of the mapping is displayed. Click Next. Because the product description was defined as a parameter in the mapping, I am asked to enter a product description. This time I'll filter for Samsung phones by entering Samsung S4 Galaxy for the product description. Note that a mapping configuration task can be assigned to run on a schedule, include email notifications, and can also invoke pre- and post-processing commands. I'll schedule the task to run nightly. Click Save and Run to run and verify the task. Note that the task has completed successfully. I'm going to make one additional edit to the mapping. I'd also like to be able to dynamically select the Salesforce connection when I create a mapping configuration task. In order to do this, I'll edit the mapping again and parameterize the source connection. Click on the Salesforce account source to edit its properties. Then click on the Source tab. Click the New Parameter button next to the Connection field to create a connection parameter. For a connection parameter, you can limit the type of connections that will be available in the Mapping Configuration Task Wizard. Click OK to create the parameter. Save your changes to the mapping by clicking Save and Continue. Note that in the upper right corner of the Mapping Designer, you can see the number of mapping configuration tasks that are associated with this mapping. The task status also shows you that the task is out of date, meaning that the mapping has been updated but the changes have not yet been deployed to the configuration task. Note that the Mapping Configuration task will continue to run based on the old version of the mapping. In order to update any Mapping Configuration task to use the new version of the mapping, you must deploy the mapping. To do this, click on the Save menu and select the Save and Deploy to Mapping Configuration Tasks option. A confirmation dialog shows you a list of the Mapping Configuration tasks that will be affected. Note that the dialog also warns you that the mapping configuration task, as it's been defined, must be updated to be compatible with the new mapping. This is because the Salesforce connection is now a parameter. You can decide to keep tasks or delete them. The final step would be to return to the mapping configuration task, edit it, and select the Salesforce connection.
Notice that the Mapping Configuration Task Wizard now prompts you to select a Salesforce connection. This concludes the video on getting started with a mapping designer. You are now ready to begin building and deploying your own mappings. For more details, see the online help or the Informatica Cloud community.